Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by John Hovanesian, Dr. John Hovanesian, who is here on behalf of Harvard Eye Associates. Well, Dr. Hovanesian, how are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. This is uh, an exciting time of year we're getting into and uh, lots of good health topics uh, that, are, that, that come up. Exactly, exactly. Well, today we're talking about LASIK eye surgery and what some of the differences are between LASIK versus cataract surgery. And you mentioned off camera that there've been a little bit of confusion. So you're here to sort of clarify, you know, why you would want one over the other. But before you get into that, tell me what LASIK surgery is. Yeah, so LASIK surgery is a procedure where we take the glasses or contact lens prescription and put it directly on the eye. And so uh, whether someone is nearsighted and they can't see far away and they, they need glasses or contacts for distance vision, or whether they want to see better, uh, they're, they're farsighted and have um, some trouble in the near range, we have ways of helping people to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, LASIK surgery takes about five or 10 minutes. So we typically treat both eyes at the same time. For most people say it's completely painless. They may have a little scratchiness for a, a day or, or so afterwards, but they're back to normal activities really right away. And, uh, and it helps them see in many cases better, much better than they did before. And, and of course, without glasses or contacts. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty exciting procedure. It's kind of relevant to this time of year because se several of my patients who are older patients have told me, you know what, this year I'm giving LASIK to my kids for the holidays. Uh, and uh, I said, why are you doing that? And they said, well, I don't want to order something online <laughs> like I've done the past couple of years because uh, stuff is not coming, right? You know, there's, it's sitting out on container ships in the harbor. There's, you know, worries about supply chain, worries about things kind of running out this holiday. So I'm going to give them something that doesn't depend on that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that they can enjoy for the rest of their lives, or at least, you know, for many years and until they themselves need cataract surgery uh, to, um, to see better. And so right. it's a nice gift. That's, Quite a gift, a nice that, gift. that's a gift that keeps on giving. It, it, it certainly is. Right. And, I mean, I, I, I had it done about 15 years ago, and I must say that uh, it's still working. Although up close, I didn't really take care of that. So I do use reading glasses, but, but nonetheless, far away is awesome. And uh, I just experienced that this weekend where I had to see something far away and it, it worked out great. So, so I love it. it. And, and, yeah. you know, lots of people uh, could certainly look into doing that. What are some of the changes that you've seen with LASIK surgery over the years? That's tremendous. Uh, you know, I, saw, I started doing LASIK surgery um, almost 25 years ago now, and um, it, uh, it's remarkable. It's been around just about that long, so right at the beginning. And the accuracy, the precision of the vision, the range of vision, um, uh, the, the simplicity of the procedure, the safety of the procedure, all have improved. Uh, tremendously as new technologies come along. And, um, you know, millions and millions of people here in the U.S. have had LASIK, and, um, and it's an effective procedure. It's not a procedure for everybody, depending on the measurements of the eye, depending upon, you know, other conditions a patient has. Not everybody is ideally suited for LASIK, which is why you want to go to a place that uh, offers a wide range of procedures, because rather than being directed into the procedure that just they perform, uh, you know, if, if you're not a great candidate for LASIK, what are you a great candidate for? And at least you have options. And so um, that's one nice thing about our practice with LASIK is we have a wide variety of procedures we do. Right. Now, you know, if someone was uh, going to consider LASIK and um, maybe they had a cataract or they, they weren't sure if they had a cataract, how do you guide them about the differences? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's one that comes up all the time and it's a source of a lot of confusion. Uh, so, you know, just to differentiate, uh, cataract, and we've got a picture to show, is a condition where the lens inside the eye. So inside everyone's eye is a lens. It's about the size of an aspirin tablet. Um, and that lens gradually becomes cloudy over the course of our lives. And, you know, even in our 40s, we have the earliest sign of cataract. It doesn't usually affect us really noticeably until our 60s. But um, even earlier than that, doing LASIK surgery can still be done well into someone's 50s but it's not always the best option because um, by the time we reach our late 50s, 60s and beyond, 
the lens becomes cloudy enough that it kind of degrades the quality of the image that the eye sees. And so even the world's best LASIK surgery, just like the world's best glasses or contacts, don't give perfect vision if you're looking through a cloudy lens inside the eye. Right. So there comes a point at which it's better for us to take that lens, remove it, and replace it with an artificial lens implant. And a lens implant inside the eye, and we've got a picture to show you, um, is um, is clear and beautiful and never gets old or cloudy. And it will give you and set your vision the rest of your life. And we can use that lens to, um, you know, to give the prescription, the range of vision that the person wants. So with modern lens implants, we can more or less eliminate glasses. And in fact, do some things that LASIK can't do like give a range of vision in each eye from distance and arm's length and up close. So okay. just as I said, not every patient is a perfect candidate for LASIK. There is a crossover at which point we say, you know what, you're better suited with a lens implant. Again, a reason you want to see a practice that has a wide range of procedures they do so that they're choosing what's right for you, not just what's right for them. Now, does LASIK, as someone who has had LASIK, does it prolong cataracts or cataracts are going to come whether you've had LASIK or not? Yeah, eventually cataracts will happen to most of us. Um, some folks may put off cataract surgery a little longer because they've had LASIK and that's okay as long as they're functioning all right. Okay. Um, if you're enjoying the way you see, if you're not limited by in your ability to do things, whether or not you've had LASIK, well, you don't have to do cataract surgery yet. Okay. The third uh, picture I sent you is a lens implant inside the eye. And so that takes the place of that sort of aspirin, you know, uh, tablet sized, sized lens inside the eye. And it's a little smaller than an aspirin tablet, but it, uh, it focuses the light that comes through the pupil. And, um, and this is just an example of one type of lens implant. But we have, there's been tremendous development in lens implants in eye care in the past uh, really 15 years that have, you know, it used to be that cataract surgery was about treating a disease and giving back some clarity, but you had to wear glasses. Nowadays, very few of our patients after cataract surgery wear glasses, I'll say for most activities. Right. They may wear them for some, but for the most part, they can live their lives more or less glasses free. Right. So um, it's a wonderful procedure that has just gotten better. So LASIK tends to be a better procedure for people who are you know, 50-ish or under, and cataract surgery for those who are, you know, sort of 60 and above, uh, tends to be the better procedure. Although each individual has, you know, their own situation that well, may right. change when and we course, recommend one procedure or another. And of course, it would warrant, uh, you know, a visit to you to make sure they choose one or the other. Uh, just real quickly on the LASIK side of things, so, uh, you know, back, back when I had it there, it was a very quick recovery. However, you still had to protect your eyes for quite some time. If you were active in some type, type of sport, say pickleball or tennis, you didn't want, you wanted to make sure that your eyes were protected. Did they still recommend that you do that regardless of any eye surgery that you have? Well, you know, for a period of time, the eye is a little bit vulnerable, it, you know, when we sleep at night for a few nights, it's important to kind of protect the eyes. And we have patients who, you know, we give them a, like a little shield that you can put on with medical tape, or some people prefer to wear ski goggles that they have or buy, a, or, or, you know, there's all kinds of solutions I've seen people use for a couple of nights, just so you don't accidentally rub the eye. After a couple of days, it's not an issue. Um, although, just like a sports injury can damage the unoperated eye, it can also injure the eye that's had LASIK and the injuries are a little different if you've had LASIK, but uh, it, we don't think of it as a risky thing to do. And a good example is Navy SEALs. Um, it, you know, for a number of years now, Navy SEALs have been allowed to have LASIK because they did a lot of testing to see, hey, what happens if the eye gets injured with LASIK? And they learned that, well, your, your ability to function with LASIK is so much better. And the tiny risk of having an injury that would be worse because of LASIK is almost nothing. So you're far better to have the LASIK than not have the LASIK. And most of us aren't jumping out of airplanes at low altitude or diving under submarines to right. set explosives. We're just kind of, you know, driving to the restaurant for lunch. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about that, but but I appreciate you giving us that example. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate the information. Thank you, as always. It's a pleasure to see you and uh, happy holidays and, um, and, and just a great rest of the year to you.
if I don't see you before it's uh, over. We'll we'll get you in here in person next year. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We'll back in the studio. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Stay well. All right. And we'll be right back.